In this video, I'm going to take you through a quadruped flow. There's going to be some movements that aren't in quadruped, but they're all going to get us in and out of quadruped in this uh, sequence. So, just as a, a precursor, this is full kneeling, this is half kneeling, this is a quadruped step up, this is quadruped position one, so hands and knees, opposite side step up, step up rotation where you rotate towards the front leg, and then the opposite side rotation in quadruped step up, return the other way. So those are the movements in the sequence, and then I'm going to run us through how to do each one, and we're going to make a little flow out of it. There's no rules with this, you just want to make sure you're getting a dose of each movement and flowing in and out um, between the different ones. So you get a high input of diversity, and it's very stimulating for the brain too, because you're thinking more about the patterning and the movements themselves. So we'll learn each movement by itself, then we'll flow it together, and this is something I think should be done 10, 20 minutes a few times a week or more, depending on client programming, if I'm sending this to one of my clients. But just a great movement sequence that gets a lot of joints moving together, and again, the patterning and coordination of it all is where the magic really happens. So first and foremost, we're in full kneeling, or tall kneeling, sorry, I think I called it full kneeling. This is tall kneeling. We want to make sure the belt buckle and tailbone are tilted backward. So we have belt buckle up, tailbone slightly down. And then from this position, once we have a shorter abdomen and a longer back line from that pelvic tilt, we want to keep the pelvis in the same position as we lean slightly, bridge of the nose over one leg, and we take one leg up as steady, slow, and controlled as possible. Switch sides. So this is the full kneeling or tall kneeling march. And it looks just like this. The slower and more controlled you can be on one leg, the better. So it's a balancing, hip balance movement. Show it from the side. So slower, more controlled, the better. We are swaying left to right, but other than that, we don't want the upper body to do much twisting, compression, leaning, side bending. We want it to stay nice and everything in the same place. Over time, we go five seconds back, five seconds forward for added intensity or you could do two seconds, three seconds, work your way up, or you could go above five if you wanted to. So that's the full kneeling position. The next thing, we'll go into the step up, and we're gonna do our hands to floor hinge. So this comes from the hips going back to lower the arms, and the hips and pelvis going forward to lift the arms. So I'm just gonna do a couple each side. Breathing can be synced up however you want to. Make sure you're taking nasal inhales, mouth exhales for the majority of the flow. And then I'm going to switch sides. So on that one, I was pretty narrow, so I have not a lot of room. You can definitely keep it a little wider for this one. So hips go back, hips go forward, arms up, hips back, hands down. Make sure you're tall at the top and not stopping somewhere like this. Make sure you get nice and tall. Ear, shoulder, hip, knee, all in one straight line here. Next motion is when I'm down here, I'm going to very slowly and controlledly without moving my back too much, switch legs. So with this one, I'm imagining a glass of water on both kidneys and my tailbone. There obviously would fall if that was really the case, but I want everything in my body to be a statue except for the leg in motion. So this is the quadruped step up or the step up march because we'll alternate left to right. We don't want to see any leaning, head jutting, nice and stable. Go 
the quadruped step up march. Once I'm in the step up on one side, I'm gonna look at my hand with my eyeballs and I'm gonna rotate and get as much rotation in my mid spine as I can. Switch sides. Again, trying to stack this hand over this hand, one straight line perpendicular to the floor. Chest opens up this way, but I don't want my low back to be too open. So I'm gonna show you guys how this, we don't want this to look. Watch how on this rotation, I'm gonna really open up my hips. You can see the small of my back really well in the camera. That's what we don't wanna do. I wanna imagine if my right hand's the one coming up to rotate, I want to glass on my right kidney, but you can think of any space in the low back if you want. But especially, whatever leg's up, that side kidney stays down, so I'm twisting from my mid-spine, not the hips. Drop the hips so that the mid-spine is doing the rotating. So I'll do a couple from the side. Not like this, keeping that down. This is a mid-spine rotation, not a full-spine rotation. You can hear my voice, how it becomes very difficult very quickly. That's a good thing. Sinking the breath any way you'd like to. Just make sure you're not holding your breath at any point. Feel free to pause at any point where you feel really stretchy. Do some breathing into the belly, into the ribcage. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Also, with this rotation, you'll find that one side is a lot tighter than the other side. So when you are flowing, try to spend extra time on the side that's tighter with these rotations um, to make up for that, try to even it out over time. So, from the quadruped step up, then we go into the warm, uh, quadruped rotation. Now I'm gonna imagine my arms getting sucked up into a UFO and this hand's gonna leave the ground, and I'm gonna sit up nice and tall and face forward. Belt buckle, sternum, nose, all face forward. We're gonna go into a body weight windmill. And do a couple reps here. I like to inhale on the way down, exhale on the way up. Notice how I get really twisted, and then I straighten everything up. I don't wanna do something like this. Or there. I want to make sure again, ear, shoulder, hip, knee, all perpendicular to the ground in a straight line. Arm nice and open, not bent or reaching out to the side, straight up, sucked up into the spaceship. I'll show you guys a couple from this side. You can get alternate sides or do them all at once on one side. You can knock out three here. Three on the other side, you can alternate each one. So we've got the tall kneeling marches. The hip hinge, maybe you go a little wider. The step up, march, alternating sides. The step up rotation, not taking that low back. The windmill. Notice in the windmill too, it initiates from the hip. By going back in space, forward in space to set back up. And a flow might look something like this for an elongated period of time. No rhyme or reason or rules. If this is my bad rotator side, maybe I knocked five out here instead of one. 
We don't have to get super tied up in numbers, just duration and listening to the body. I could do just one side of my march, trying to get that side better. You'll probably have a side that's harder to go up with the leg in the march. So feel free to knock a few out. And there you have it. Handful of movements, lots of sequencing options. Make sure, make sure you know each movement before you flow. So spend one minute per movement as a warm up, then put it all together through a flow. So that's the movements, those are the sequencing, 10 to 20 minutes and uh, you should feel pretty solid. Lots of joints moving together, making a symphony of joints rather than playing a bunch of solos. I'll see you guys on the next video.